Now, last time I thought for half an hour and wrote down three lines, and the lines that I wrote down are length and angle constraints are applied relative to the corners adjacent to the selected corner at the point in the animation occupied by the selected vert relative to the corners adjacent to the selected corner at the point in the animation occupied by the selected vert. Now, that does make sense to me. Um, the Having thought about it more in the last couple of hours, I do foresee this being a really strange system, but I kind of got it into my head to do the length and angle snapping, so I'm going to just put them in. But it's going to be bizarre to use when you have a, even a slightly complicated animation. And what I actually imagine the angle and length snapping to be used for is more for setting up very regular static uh, designs. But I have to do that. I have to put it in this way. Uh, it'll work with static designs anyway, according to these rules but I'm going to have to give a little bit of thought to certain situations. I'm going to code it in anyhow. Some of the code that I'm going to write here is going to be moved around, but I want to see the results in the display, so everything that I do to figure out these positions will be happening here in Finish Draw. So, if length snap is on, that is to say, I'll maybe just make this explicit if project length snap equals true. What exactly needs to happen? Let me run the code. The worktop gadget contains two references, one called covered vert and one called selected vert I think I am right in saying no, one is called covered corner no, I'll have to remind myself what it is, but basically the corners have these states, as you can see this one's yellow, it knows it's selected this one is orange, it is covered when the corners have further verts but an idiotic name. It's just because I knew that it was a like a vert. It's not even a vertex, is it? <laughs> I'll rename them. But at the moment they're called verts. One, two verts in this corner. There's a selected vert on top of the selected corner. You can see which corner is selected, sort of, when it has a path because the path appears brighter. That's meaningless. What I need to think about is using the information about which vert and which corner is selected to inform the position of the further guides, the length and angle guides. So in some circumstances there is no uh, covered or selected corner. Let me remind myself I wonder if I put it outside the worktop gadget. Uh, honestly, uh, my code often explodes this way, and again, it is just, yeah, my lazitude and uh, inexperience. Anyway, now what I'm looking at are the globals that are stored inside my recursor class. The reason they're globals is the recursor class is what I guess might be considered an instance, cla instance class, if I'm using that right term. It just runs the whole editor. I didn't make it a, an instance of a class. So this is the information stored about the state of the editor. Among it are these things. Selected, covered, selected, covered. Right. Those are the pieces of information that get, they're the references that get updated in this function, method, called check position. 
check position is called from the work method of the work zone gadget. Something similar to that will be called to get the nearby uh, snap points. But by the time finish draw is called, cover advert and select advert and all those things are set, they're decided. So I can use those bits of information. Now, I want the guides to appear whenever there's a select advert. If select advert. Well, whenever the snapping, the length snapping is on. So if there is a select advert, if it's not null, can I make that explicit? I will. So that's distinct from the covered vert. It doesn't matter which vert is being covered. Um, it matters which one's selected. So that when you click on a vert from that point on, the relevant guides for that vert are displayed. You can go and cover another vert with the mouse, but that won't do anything. It won't change where the guides are. You have to click on it, to make it the selected vert. That will make change where the guides are. So I hear I'm checking that there is a selected vert when the program's first run. There's nothing selected. Now, what I need to do is decide the position of the uh, of the animation. at the selected vert. So in this instance, this animation loops. I can make it clearer that it loops by adding in another control point. When I select this vert, that vert is a control point for the path. There is you can see the position readout here that shows how far along the animation the current display is. Position 0 being the start, this path loops, so at the end it's in the same position. At this point, it'll be a third of the way, oh, no, two thirds of the way through. I'm going to take the recursions down to 0, just to show the lines. One, two, Four, five, six. It's two thirds approximately the way through the animation, and the vert and the line setup is this at that point. And you can see that that vert appears exactly two thirds of the way through the animation because each segment lasts for one third of the animation. So when I've selected this vert, even though the current position of the display is here, 0.477, this vert represents the position this corner will be at two-thirds of the way through. So the position, the actual positions of the corners that this vert has to lock to are the positions of these corners two-thirds of the way through the animation and I can clarify that by selecting this vert and adding a couple of frames and showing that that's two-thirds of the way through when I move it through to there that is two-thirds of the way through so regardless of the display as defined by this slider and position. When I click this vert, I'm changing the position of this corner at this time position, which I can sort of find just by scrubbing to it. Position 1, the absolute start or end of the loop. So what I need to do to know where the guides must appear is figure out the positions of the corners at the same time as 
the selected corner will be at the position of the selected vert. I might have to do a load of extra drawing to make this make sense because literally what will happen is I will click on a vert like that according to the way I do it if I manage to code it right and it will present a set of guides which are aligned with the other corners uh, at their one-third position, one-third the way through the animation. So where is that for this one? It is at top corner. So when I hold down that, a set of guides are going to appear around this. Even stranger it will be if there are only two points. In this example, where I click on this and a set of guides appear around this, it so happens these two paths have the same number of control points. Ah. If it was the case, if I remove one of the control points, I didn't set this up well. Then, what's now happening is this time, one third of the way through the animation, doesn't line up with any control point here. A set of guides will appear, but they'll be just floating. One third of the way through the animation, which will be somewhere around here. So, it's a difficult, odd thing to look at, it will be. But, anyway. So I need to use that, I meant to leave that on. I need to use that selected and covered vert information. Sorry, I didn't mean to do any edits here at all, but got called away. Anyway, yeah. I have to use those pieces of information. Selected and covered vert. No, selected vert and selected corner. So, I need to find the adjacent corners to the selected corner. Now there are three scenarios. There's the scenario where the selected corner is the well the selected yeah the selected corner is the first corner or it's one of the in-between ones or it's the last corner. Uh, which should I do first? I guess I just have to have a little think. Well, one problem is my corners. There's a class which is corner set. Corner set is the list of corners. A corner is a class which contains a list of verts. The verts are the control points of the path for the corner. Figuring out which is the first corner is if well uh, which way do I want to do I hate these little pieces of logic because I feel like there's probably a totally uh, like a, a well understood common way to do this but it's the one of the three states and which bit of logic is the quickest to sort through those not that this has to be very fast but um, I suppose just if, then, else if, if, else if, if, else, and another nested if. I'll do it to, that way to begin with. And it's a strange way I need to look at this. I need to say if selected corner equals project corner set uh, corners first node node value the selected corner is the first else and if 
selected coroner equals project. <laughs> this is quite unpleasant, isn't it? Or is it? I don't know. I can't tell. Coroner set coroner's last node value. Plucking the first and last nodes from the linked list. End. Uh, 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 else. End. The selected corner is the last. The selected corner is either <laughs> first nor last. What is it? It's, it's in between. I'm just going to say it's in between. Right. So I'm going to do the in-between ones first, because I'm wanting to see all the work I need to do. And then I'll start narrowing it down and plucking the pieces out. Uh, so now I need to consider the selected vert. And I need to think how far through the animation is the selected vert. Uh, a thing to consider is this corner has a path which loops. I can switch it off. You can actually see it change colour slightly as it's being drawn. Now it doesn't loop. And if I slide through the animation, it just moves from one end to the other. This one still loops. This has no loops. I can add another point and it still does not loop. Now, the thing about that is that whether or not the path loops changes the number of segments relative to the number of control points. This has three control points and two segments. This has three control points and three segments. So, whether or not the corner has a looping path is going to determine how far through that path the number of the vert is the selected vert. So the first thing I'm going to do is say if selected corner oops count verts this is greater than one else See, this stuff has to happen in everything, I think, so it's like uh, this corner has no path. This corner. I'll make it this corner is static. Static. Uh, does this make a difference? I uh, apologize again. I'm just, because I'm really literally thinking of suit. Uh, I, I'll ignore that for now. It might make a difference. But actually... Well, yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? Because I'm trying to... I'm going to divide the uh, 1 by the number of verts. And if it's not... Okay, what am I actually trying to figure out? If yeah, if the if it's got one vert, then it's one. I suppose that's okay, isn't it? I'm going to ignore that for now. Local uh, vert pause for vert position, meaning this selected vert position through the frame through the animation. And I realise that I'm going to need something else first because of that thing about how uh, looping and non-looping paths have different numbers of segments. I need to say numsegs int unsigned int equals uh, project corner set corners. No corner. I'm 
hopeless selected corner. selected corner do. I hate my mouse wheel. Uh, and my editor's gone crazy as well. One moment while I try and make it make sense. Okay, corner. Count verts. Okay, I'm already going to be counting verts. Numsegs equals selected corner count verts. My editor did not go crazy there. I made an error and it nullified everything after it. Then I say if selected corner loop flag equals true num sex plus one. Now is that right? A oh man, is that right? Sorry, I'm losing concentration here and this is the point of this is that it's going to get very, very boring if I sit here staring at the screen in silence. So let me check how long I've been wittering for. If selected corner loop flag equals true num six plus one right, so this means that segments I'm dealing with the right thing. Now I want to divide num segments by select corner. Local V buttons, okay. I'm just gonna spell it all out. Seg size float equals one point oh divided by the float of num sex. So now I know that a three point Ah oh man, this is why I'm having a problem with this. It's like two verts means two segments when it is looping. This is why I'm getting it the wrong way round. Uh, num sex minus one. Gosh, it's because counting the verts. If you have one vert, you have zero segments. If you have two verts, you have one segment. So it's this minus one, and then if it's bloody true, it's plus one. Ah. See how easily confused I am. These things just trip me up all the time. Local num sex equals select a corner, count verts minus one. Okay. So this is how I know how far through the loop I am. Num sex plus equals one. It's because I know the segment size and then I can v pause equals uh, now I have a, it's like a seg size multiplied by I have a thing because now I'm using the vert to say I want to multiply the size of an individual segment between the verts by the number of the vert so if it's zero it's the first vert and if it is I have to put something in there to get my editor to believe that I'm not making huge mistakes. Come on, thank you. Where do I have read right advert insert? <sighs> I have a <laughs> I'm so sorry about this. I can only repeat how because the verts are also stored in a linked list, and what I need is a number. Find index. There, I have a little function. Which I'm going to change right now. Because basically, 
it's in a place it shouldn't be. It's sitting there inside the main editor code, and this is to do with lists. It's to do with finding the index of a, a vector in a list of vectors. God. If I don't change this now, I'm going to regret it later. What I want to do is take it out of here and put it into the corner class, and I'm just going to do it. Uh, my code is going to complain about it, but I will just have to remember to fix it. In here, I said, in here, method find index. And this will accept just a vector. And I know I'm already, I don't need to accept the list anymore, because I know that the list is my own list of verts. So what this does is, what it now does, when the autocorrect catches up, is it's a method on a corner which you pass a vector, and it returns a number, and the number is the number of that vector in order. So the first vector is 0, second is 1, so on and so forth, as if they were in an array. There's probably a command that does this, it's just I, I'm too ignorant to know about it. Uh, let's see. So, that should work. It will also have caused some problems. All the way back up my code, and maybe we'll just try and catch them now. It is in here somewhere. It's insert before and insert after. Not the buttons, but the functions. Insert vert after. There it is. Find index. So now, what this, the way this actually should read is selected corner, find index, vert selected. OK. Now there's another function which will do the same thing. Verts. No, 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 don't need any of that. Just need selected vert. Find index a selected vert. Come on, let me know that I'm right. Let me check my time. 15. In a few minutes I'll be hitting half an hour. I'll correct these errors. Don't need that. Here. Okay. Okay, okay. Come on. Thank you. Hopefully all my code exists. Yes. So now, back inside my draw routine, a segment size multiplied by selected corner, 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 find index, selected, alert. Now, the problem here is numsex might be zero. So, and whether or not it's looping, because the loop flag actually comes true, so that will increase to uh, increase numbers eggs to one under all circumstances, even if the number of verts in the corner is one, which is to say it does not animate. And I can't divide that by zero, so I will have to say if num eggs is greater than zero. Uh, hang on a sec. Yeah, and I do have to do it here as well. Forget this. I'm already deciding. I'm wanting to know whether or not sex is greater than zero. Sorry, wittering very much. Else, end if. So if this corner does animate, get the right number of segments, figure out how far th through the 
animation the currently selected segment is, which I now know. VPOS is the size of the segment multiplied by the selected verts index. Zero if it's zero, but that's fine. In here, I think it's going to be something like VPOS equals zero. That's my guess, and I think I'm going to leave it there because. Oops, I'm going to have to have VPOS out here if that is. Because that's about half an hour. This has been choppy, partly because I did a chop, and partly because I, as always, am fumbling in the dark. Why is local? Okay, no, sorry, that's right. Okay, I am fumbling in the dark, yes. Sorry for my wittering. The place I've got to now, though, is a little bit further on from having determined this rule. So now I'm looking at the selected vert, and I'm looking at the selected corner, and I'm starting to understand how far through the selected corner's path the selected vert is, and I'm going to use that information shortly to figure out the position that the adjacent corners must be considered to be in while this corner gets moved. A very bizarre thing to say, but I'll continue with that very soon.